Hi guys and welcome back from Carly at the Hibothecary. Uh, really good to see you guys again. If you're new to the channel or like the video, please show your support by hitting like and subscribe down below. Let us know that you've enjoyed it, uh, found something useful and you'll get notifications whenever we do any new videos. Uh, we do have ones on everything from crochet to macrame to hundreds of foraging videos and recipes, identifications, and soups, uh, stews, risottos, lots of videos. I um, hope you enjoy them. It's the 1st of May 2021 and we have another lockdown edition. And the forage monkeys and I have been taking every opportunity to get out and get our exercise. So today we've been looking for horsetail or Equisetum arvens, and we are going to be looking at seven ways that I like to use it. Before we get started, it's time for the usual disclaimer. I am not a doctor, I am not an ethnobotanist, I am a student of life as they say, I own really good guidebooks and I've been doing this for a while. So always do your own thorough research first. We say check thrice, check with a guidebook, check with the internet and check with someone else who might know better. Don't need anything unless you're 100% sure. Always get the landowner's permission before you forage. Avoid polluted areas or anywhere where animals might have sprayed. Don't pick endangered species and never take more than you need. But now on to the amazing horsetail. Now at the beginning of the season, they'll look brown with their little seed head on top. They do not flower, but the ones we are looking for are ones they've grown green and they look kind of like little trees. Now these have been around for over 500 million years. They are so high in carbon, silica, phosphorus, magnesium, iron and calcium and manganese that they advise that you only use it for a maximum of two months at a time as the high mineral content can be hard for your body to flush out. These are great for your bones, your teeth, your hair, your joints. They can be used externally for helping with hair growth or as a poultice to help with sprains or popping on your nails to help them grow stronger. Internally, it can be chewed, the little top bits, and helps with gingivitis. Um, as a tea, it can help with the kidneys. It's antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, immune boosting, tones the arteries, absolutely amazing. So today we're going to be looking at around seven ways that I like to use this beautiful horsetail. And as with all our foragers, I left these outside for half an hour for the bugs to vacate and now gave them a good wash. I'm going to separate out the smaller ones for my first use and that is to just pop them in my dehydrator and I'll be using them in a cup of tea. Now remember, you don't want to boil them too much, uh, you don't want to destroy all the active ingredients, so I boil the water, let it sit for a minute to cool down, and then pop it into my little tea maker, and we'll enjoy a cup of tea while we get on with our other uses. So for this, I have thoroughly dried all my horsetails. I am now going to pick out the ones with the largest stems, as we'll be using them in a recipe later. And I'm going to strip all of those little side bits off until we have our stems. I'll pop them aside. Any smaller ones with thinner stems, I'm just going to break them up finely. And then we are going to make a couple of infusions and a tincture. You can cut these up with a knife to increase the surface area and release more of the juices, but I just like to break them up by hand. So first we're going to pop them in some vodka. Now this was just a normal bottle of vodka that we popped through the still and increased the proof. We've also got some apple cider vinegar that we made at the beginning of, well finished making at the beginning of the year. And we have some coconut oil. Uh, we're going to be infusing it in there. So I've just popped that in a bowl and put it over a double boiler so that it can melt and I am going to pop a healthy handful of these in there and we're going to allow them to infuse into the oil for a while. 
And as this infusion is for a toothpaste, I will also be adding a large handful of the chocolate mint I have growing in my garden for that minty fresh breath feeling. So I'm just going to give that a rough chop again. It's easier than getting my knife out every time. And we want to release the menthol oils in that mint. I'll give that a good stir and pop it back over my double boiler system to infuse for a while while we get on with the vodka and the apple cider vinegar. But with this, we're going to be using diatomaceous earth and a calcium carbonate paste, powder rather, in order to make a toothpaste. Now the opening to my funnel was too small to do this so I just cut off the top of a Ribena bottle to use as a funnel but I am literally just going to add another large handful to that apple cider vinegar and the same to the vodka and allow them to infuse for as long as you can but I normally say at least a week minimum. I will then, we can use the vodka taken in a teaspoon as medicine to help or you can use the apple cider vinegar in recipes or as a dressing on salad. So just fill them up to the top as much as you can, pack them down, pop the lid on and allow them to infuse. So our coconut oil infusion has been sat there for a couple of hours now and I want to strain the plant matter out. So I'm just going to do this over a sieve. You can use a cheesecloth. Remember to give it a good press and get as many of those oils out as you possibly can. I am then going to be adding one part uh, diatomaceous earth, two parts calcium powder and mixing until I have a nice paste. As you can see by the greenness, all those oils have infused into, um, all the oils from the plants have infused into the coconut oil and coconut oil also helps uh, clean your teeth. So we will get that paste ready and then I'm just going to pop that in a jar. This one doesn't last long in my house as the whole house uses it. So pop in a jar, label, date and refrigerate if needed. The next use is one of my favorites and one I most definitely need. As you can see, I've had some thinning at the top of my hair since having my three babies. So for this one, we are going to be using some horsetail, some fenugreek seed, some aloe vera and some rosemary. This is actually fresh rosemary that's been dried from my garden. I just popped it right back into an empty rosemary container that I had. Now we're going to start by giving the horsetail a good chop. As I said, this can be kind of hard going using a knife, so I use scissors or just shred them apart with my hands. Again, if you're feeling energetic, you can grind the fenugreek up in a pestle and mortar. However, I'm just going to use the food processor today as it does a much better job of this. We're then going to add the horsetail to a large jar. Then we're going to cut a nice healthy chunk of the aloe vera gel. What we want to do is just use the gel inside. So I'm gonna give that a slice, chop down those sides, Cut straight down the middle and then it's easy to remove the gel with a little spoon. I would normally use an entire aloe vera leaf for this, however my poor plant has quite taken quite a beating. We'll then add our fenugreek seeds and our rosemary and then we're just going to top this up with water and allow it to infuse for at least 24 hours. This can also be done as a cold water infusion, but I do find the heat helps to bring out the oils. Just don't make it too hot that you destroy all the active ingredients. So after it's sat for 24 hours, I'll strain out the plant matter, pop it into a large bottle that I can keep in the fridge, and I'll decant a small amount into a spray bottle that I can use as and when needed. But to this, we are going to add some extra ingredients. I'm going to add some glycerin, which does help with the absor absorption into the scalp. And I'm going to add some lavender oil because that fenugreek does make you smell a bit like a curry. So I'm going to put in about a teaspoon of the glycerin and around 20 drops of the lavender oil. And then I will apply it uh, to my hair 
as and when needed. I do use it every day, sometimes twice a day for the first couple of weeks. However, if I go out, um, rather than smelling like a curry, I do like to wash it out afterwards. Uh, if I don't need to go out, I will leave it in for as long as possible, for as long as my family can deal with the smell anyway. So, so far we have covered a tea, a toothpaste, a apple cider vinegar infusion, a water hair infusion, and the vodka tincture. So, let's get into the kitchen for use number six, which is using it in a recipe. And today we will be using them instead of noodles in a, a sweet and sour chili stir fry. So we are going to start with one large carrot. I'm going to save the top of this one and pop it in some water to harvest those greens. We're going to cut this into batons. I've then got about an inch and a half of ginger. I'm going to chop half of this finely and pop it in with the initial ingredients. The other half I'm going to blend with some water in the food processor. Then going to finely chop an onion. Same with three or so cloves of garlic. A third of a red bell pepper, finely sliced into long slivers. I'm then going to use about a third of this large chili, just cut down the sides. Um, I'm gonna do the same with one three-cornered leek. And my final addition, I use with caution, as the umbilifer family do have some dangerous lookalikes, but these are the shoots of the common hogweed. They're little florets, and I'm just gonna pop them on the top. So let's get cooking. Over on the stove we have one frying pan with a little bit of olive oil heating up and we have a pan of boiling water. Now the carrots take the longest to soften so I'm going to pop them in first. It's a supplement with the horsetail shoots as they are really high in minerals, you don't want too many. I've got some stems of the dandelion flowers, about 12 of those to 10 of the horsetail shoots. So carrots go into the pot first and while they're softening we're going to get on with the sauce. So I've got the onions in the frying pan and I'm just going to stir them until they're translucent, not caramelized, just translucent and soft. Once they are you can add your ginger, stir that for a few minutes, then your chili, your garlic, your three cornered leeks and then finally the bell pepper. Lower the heat and stir continuously to avoid burning. We're now going to add those dandelion flower stems and the horsetails to the water as well. Now I cut the dandelion stems as they were quite long. I don't want the hogweed shoots mixing in so I'm just going to pop them in a colander on the top. We then go back to our frying pan and we're going to add that ginger and water mixture that we made. It was about 300 mils of water that I used with that chunk of ginger. Then going to add about 50 mils of apple cider vinegar, 30 mils of soy sauce, two large tablespoons of honey, and about half a tube of tomato puree. Now you can use cornstarch to thicken it up, however I just prefer to add two tablespoons of brown sugar and allow it to reduce. So I'll turn that back up to a higher heat and allow it to simmer down. It's now time to check on our greens, so our hogweed shoots are nice and soft. I'll separate them for a minute. Then we're going to check on our dandelion shoots and our um, horsetails, make sure they're nice and soft. And now for number seven. All that beautiful water we do not want to throw away. So we're going to drain off our veg and pop that water aside and allow it to cool. Now back onto our meal. Our sauce is now nice and thick. So we are going to pop the dandelion shoots, the hug we, uh, dandelion shoots, the carrot batons and everything. We're going to pop that in. I'm going to leave that hogweed on the side to go on top afterwards. Once that's nicely coated in the sauce, it's time to serve up. So just pop it into a bowl, add those little hogweed shoots as a garnish on top, chopsticks at the ready. We'll enjoy our meal. And then once that water's cooled, it's time to get out to my garden and give them a meal too. So we're gonna use one part of the pan water to nine parts of rain water and go give my tomatoes a feed. Quick fun tip before I go, if your ginger like mine had these little green shoots, pop them in a plastic container with some wet paper, some slices of onion and it'll speed up the rooting process within a week. 
again thank you guys for coming back to the apothecary it was great to see you again don't forget to hit like and subscribe and hopefully i'll see you guys again soon bye